Hello, my name is Eve, I'm a 3D artist and illustrator and today I'll be showing you how to easily rig your characters in Blender using Rigify. Rigify is a free add-on that comes with Blender. It speeds up and automates the majority of the rigging process so it's perfect for beginners. This video will be split into two parts. In this part one, I'll show you how to set up and generate the rig. And then in part two of the video, I explain what weight painting is and how you can adjust it. If you find this video useful, make sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment. It really helps me feed the algorithm gods. Anyway, let's get started. First, we want to make sure that our mesh is positioned properly. In object mode, press A to select all of your objects. Then press G to move them and then Z to constrain the movement to the Z axis. Make sure that your model is properly aligned on the grid. After this, you want to clear all of the transforms on your objects. You want the scale on everything here to be set to one and to not have any value. As you can see here, the different objects have different scale and different location values. And how we get rid of those is by pressing Ctrl and A and then selecting all transforms. That clears all of the transforms on your mesh. As you can see here, all the location values have been zeroed out and the scale is now set to one. Now let's turn the Rigify add-on. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and in here, search for Rigify. Make sure it's turned on and then save your preferences from down here. Now press Shift-A and you'll see the Armature option pop up. Choose Armature Human Meta Rig. Now the rig has been added to the scene. It's a bit hard to see, but you can see the bones down here on the bottom. And then the Meta Rig should be in the hierarchy on the right. Now let's make it easier to see. With the meta rig selected, go into Object Data Properties, then in Viewport Display, press In Front. This way your bones will be in front of your mesh and it will be easier to see. What we're going to do now is position these bones here to match the proportions of our model by moving and rotating them around. I do that in Edit Mode. Press Tab to go into Edit Mode. First, we're going to remove the bones that we don't need. I'm deleting the face bones as we're only rigging the body today. Drag and select all of the face bones and press delete. Select the ear bones as well and delete them. And finally, here there is one face bone that is hiding in the head, which you can't see clearly. But if you turn on x-ray mode, you'll be able to see it. Select the hidden bone and delete it as well. If you don't delete this hidden bone, you'll get an error later on when trying to generate the control rig. So do make sure that you delete the internal bone at this stage. Now we're going to start positioning the bones. Make sure you have symmetry in X turned on so you move both sides at the same time. Let's start from the arms. Select the arm bones and then press G to move them. Position them roughly where the shoulder and elbow joints are. Here I'm selecting the arm and positioning it so it matches the proportions of the character. You can also press R to rotate the bones if needed. Here I'm bringing down the collar bones and also positioning the chest bones. Putting the chest bones a bit closer to the arms actually helps make deformations a bit nicer around the armpit area. So if you put them to the side here, it makes sure that this area is assigned to this chest bone and then the area over here is going to be assigned to the arm bone. When moving your bones around, you want to make sure you still have this bend between the elbow and the shoulder because that tells Blender where to position the IKs and what direction the arm is going to be bending in. So you want to keep this bend here. Next, let's do the head and neck. When moving the neck here, you want to make sure that you grab both bones together and do not separate them. Otherwise, you'll get an error when trying to generate the control rig. So instead of just grabbing the one end bone here, you just select both and use G to move them. Our character here has a non-existent neck, so I'll position the neck joints pretty really close together. Here I'm just pressing G and moving the head joint all the way to the top of the hat. Next, let's do the lower body. 
Select the pelvic bones and press G and Z to move them down in the Z axis. Here I'm just selecting all the leg bones and moving them in the X axis to match the proportions of the character. You want to move the pelvis bones so they're above the leg bones. Now let's do the feet. You want to move the foot bone back to the heel here and position it so it lays flat. Like with the arms, you want to keep the bend in the leg here because that tells Blender what way the leg will be bending once rigged. Here I'm just pressing G and positioning the toe bone so it matches the proportions of this tiny bunny foot. Position the heel bone at the back here and scale it up so it matches the width of the foot. After that, let's move the spine bone so they're spaced evenly. I'm selecting the individual bones, then pressing G and Z to move them in the Z axis. Now it's time for the hands. I've saved them for last because it's the longest and most fiddly part to set up. But with a few tricks I'll show you, it won't be difficult to set up at all. So let's get started. My character has four fingers, so I'm going to delete the pinky finger bones. With Rigify, you have to be careful when deleting bones because it will sometimes result in errors. But I know that deleting the pinky here works okay because I've tested this before. Here I'm just pressing H to hide the bones around the hand so I can see the hand bones more clearly. Let's do the thumb first. Select all the bones and press G to move them. Press S to scale them up and then G again to continue moving them around. Try to match them to the proportions of your character as close as you can. A really handy trick to use to make sure that your bones are in the middle of the fingers is to turn on snapping from up here by pressing the magnet. Change the snap to setting to volume. Now when you move the bones it will snap them to the middle of the volume. In this case the volume is the hand and the fingers. When you select the bone and press G it will snap the bone to the middle of the fingers. When moving the hand bones around, you want to make sure that you're selecting both joints here and not separating them like this. If you separate them, you'll get an error when you try to generate the control rig. So make sure they always stay together. After you've very roughly positioned your bones on this finger, you can turn on snapping to make sure the bones are positioned in the middle. Select a bone and then press G to move it and now it will snap in place. I do that for all the bones on this finger. I like to position one finger at a time. First I do a rough placement and then I accurately position them with snapping turned on after. When doing the rough placement, I turn off snapping because sometimes it snaps to random points and that can get really annoying. If you make sure your bones are nice and centered, that will make your weight paints a bit smoother later on. And I'll explain what weight paints are in part 2 of this video. For now, all you have to worry about is the bones. Once you're happy with positioning all of the finger bones, press Alt H to unhide all of the joints that were hidden earlier. Then position the hand joint like this, from the beginning of the hand all the way out to the fingers. And now with all of that done, we're ready to generate the rig. This is a really good spot to save your work in case anything goes wrong. 
If you've moved all of the joints in edit mode, when you go back into object mode, you'll see here on the right that you don't have any unusual values. Your scale should be set to 1 and you shouldn't have any values in the location. If you do, you will have to apply all transforms before you generate the control rig because otherwise you'll have an issue with the scale of the rig once you generate it. I'll show you exactly what I mean later in this video and how to fix it if it happens to you. I'll put in a timestamp in the video so you can easily find it. Before generating the rig, another thing you want to make sure is that the neck joint here is not disconnected from the spine. Otherwise, you will again get an error when you try to generate the rig. Once again, I'll show you how to fix that if it happens to you and I'll leave another timestamp in the video. If you've set up everything properly, now you're ready to generate the rig. Go into object mode and down here in object data properties, press generate rig. Congratulations, now your control rig has been generated. If everything worked properly for you, skip to the attaching the mesh to the rig chapter of this video. If not, stick around and I'll show you how to fix some common issues. The first common issue is when you have disjoined bones. This happens if you've moved a bone out of alignment with its parent bone. In this case, when you go to generate your rig, you'll get an error and your rig will fail to generate. The error looks something like this and it tells you exactly which bone is misaligned. Here you can see it's spine 004. If you want to find out exactly which bones are causing you an issue, from down here you can switch timeline to the info panel. The info panel will tell you exactly which bones are disjointed. When you find the bone from the error message, you have to make sure that it's exactly aligned with its parent. Now I'll show you how to do that. Press tab and go into edit mode. Select the end of the bone and then press shift S and then select two selected. This moves the cursor to the end of the selected bone. Now select the other bone and then from up here in armature, select snap, selection to cursor. This aligns the two ends of the bones. Now when you press generate rig, it should work. Another common issue is to do with the scale of your rig. If you've made your changes in object mode, you'll have values on your rig here. Instead of this, your scale should be set to 1. If you haven't cleared those values by applying all transforms, your rig will generate a, a scale that doesn't match your model. To fix that, undo the rig generation by pressing Ctrl and Z. Before you generate the rig, you want to make sure that you apply all transforms. To do that, press Ctrl A and then select all transforms. The scale of your armature should now be set to 1 and you should have no values in the location. Now you can generate the rig again and it will be at the proper scale. And that is it for common issues. If you have any other ones, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to help. Now that we have our rig generated, we're ready to attach our model to it. Select all the elements of your model first and then shift select your rig second. Then press Ctrl P and select with automatic weights. That attaches your mesh to the bones. Now our model is attached to the rig and we can start moving it. To move your character around, select your rig, go up here in the top left and switch to pose mode. Another way to do that is just by selecting the rig and pressing tab. Then select pose mode from there. Now you can select all of these controllers to move your mesh around. This box here in the center controls the hips. These handles here control the arms. As you can see here, there's some issues with how the mesh is deforming. We can fix that by painting the weights manually, which will tell the mesh how to deform. I'll show you how to do that in part two of this video. Here on the whiskers, there is some issues as well, and also some issues on the bottom of the dress. But not to worry, we'll fix those soon. And that is it for part one of this tutorial. If you found this video useful, make sure to leave a comment below and give it a little like. Also subscribe and turn on the notifications to get notified when I release part two of this tutorial, where I'll show you how to fix the skin weights. The bunny model I used in this video is something I made for my mini tutorial series on modeling in Blender. If you're interested in how to make it, make sure to check out the other tutorials I have on my channel. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in part two. Bye!